Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Comsol Multiphysics for Beginners. This series is being recreated in 2023 to serve you with more information and with a target it helps you developing your research problem. We have also initiated a service where we help you with a customized course so that it, the course becomes helpful to you and you can develop your research problem. If you want to avail that customized course, write to me in the email ID given in the description box and I will get back to you. In this particular video, we will be talking about a simple fluid flow problem but we will be doing this fluid flow problem in two dimensions. Sometimes we just go for two dimensional case and we do not understand actual physics of the problem and many times you, you have to be very careful when you choose 2D coordinates while your actual physical problem is a 3D problem. So just to justify this fact I have taken this example with this example we will come to know how to model a simple fluid flow problem in COMSOL and then we will come to know why 2D simulations are I mean where 2D simulations are possible and where 2D simulations should be avoided. So those mathematical perspective we will be covering in this video. So we go to the 2D simulations initially. We click on 2D. I will take the laminar flow. So this is already added because I have recently used it. Otherwise as you know you have to go to the fluid flow and search for this single phase flow and there you will be getting this laminar flow. So I double click here. Once I double click it, it will be added in the physics interface. Then I choose study. I'll go for time dependent study and then if you click your main window will come. Yeah. So initially let me work in the centimeter domain. I will take a rectangle by right clicking on geometry. In the rectangle say the height is 5 and say the width is 15 centimeter. So I click on build selected the solution space has been created. Now if I go to material I right click on the material add material from the library and we need to search for the material there are a material bank available in COMSOL. I write water I enter I click on enter otherwise you can click on search also and then I will go for this water liquid. So I double clicked on water liquid. After that I can close this window and you can see water has been added in the solution space. Now I go to laminar flow as I always do when you go to laminar flow you should check the equation. You can see this looks like a Navier-Stokes equation but in a more compact form like here uh, this is given in terms of the stress itself that is the divergence of the fluid stress. This is the continuity equation. This is the unsteady term or the fluid acceleration. This is the convective term and any additional term you can add. So there are multiple other options you, by which you can actually modify your equation. You can neglect the inertial term. So I have mentioned this is the inertial term. If you neglect it then this will be vanished. You can just see once I check it the term has vanished and uh, you can have the include gravity option. So once you click on include gravity you can see the rho g term will be added. You can also use the shallow water approximation. I will be making few more videos on shallow water flow. So shallow water flow means open channel flow, flow of river flow through a dam. So I will be taking those examples in the upcoming videos maybe in this particular series or I will create some other series. Uh, okay so for the time being we go ahead with the inertia. We include gravity. Now I right click here and I will take an inlet say this is my inlet the left one and at the inlet say I will keep some pressure boundary condition say this is kept at 10 pascal pressure and uh, I'll again right click to take one output or outlet option. 
so outlet option has been added I have to define my outlet so I define it here I just click on the edge it will be selected and the blue color define selection so I keep zero static pressure there that means it is kept at atmospheric pressure uh, you can see other edges are considered as wall automatically and on that wall I have actually introduced no slip boundary condition actually I have not introduced this is automatically set you can also go for other boundary conditions which are available here so you can say slip boundary condition electrosmotic boundary slip velocity leaking wall there are many options available if you just google it you will understand what exactly those boundary conditions mean also comsol has a user guide guide book and if you go there you can under, you can you can learn about all the things they have defined in their model so most of the things are done i go for meshing so let me go ahead with fine mesh the fine mesh is not absolutely fine but it is okay for the learning purpose uh, okay most of the things are already defined i click on compute so i run the simulation for one second and you can see the simulation has started yeah this is the velocity profile you can see at the edges the velocity is zero kind and at the middle the velocity is very high so this is the very like 5 cm diameter channel or height is 5 cm that's why only at the edges you see low velocity and throughout the middle you see high velocity so let me plot the velocity profile so when i plot it you can actually you can actually learn how to plot data in console so for that what you need to do you have to go to the data set you have to right click on the data set you'll see there is an option cut line 2d you have to click there then you have to define where is your cut line actually i want to see the velocity profile along the vertical line placed at the middle of the channel so middle of the channel means 7.5 x because you can see the length of the channel is 15 so half of it is 7.5 and I want to uh, start from here and go up to here so 0 to 5 so after I define the coordinates I click on plot then this line has been selected now the the thing is along this line I need to plot some data now where from that data will come the data will come from the study solution one and where is the study solution one just now we have simulated it once you simulate comsol solves for the equations and they store data in the in the in the space they have in the background and from there you can actually post process your data you can plot your data and that is what we are doing so the data will come from the solution one now again you have to go to the results option right click there and you have to choose one 1d plot group now whenever you choose something in comsol it will ask for where from the data is coming actually we want to plot the data which we have taken in the cut line 2d and again in cut line 2d the data is coming from the solution so instead of again uh, calling it from the solution we can actually choose the cut line 2d one option and you know we have solved for the time dependent so it is asking at which time you want to plot so initially let us plot for all the time steps so in 1d plot group 3 you again you have to right click and you have to take line graph so in the line graph we are basically plotting this spf u or basically u because uh, in the x direction the velocity component is u so then we plot it you can see this is how the profile is a kind of parabolic profile the profile is changing so you can see uh, the curve is not smooth because our meshing is not smooth so what you need to do you need to make a finer mesh so I make the mesh finer so I run the simulation again then I will see 
the profiles will become little bit smooth. Okay, the simulation has finished. Now, if I see the line graph, you can see it's a bit finer. Now, again, you go for the extra fine option build all so this mesh is even better again we run the simulation it will take again some time so just wait for a while okay Yeah, this is done. Now it will be perfectly smooth. You can see, yeah, that's a good profile. So, I uh, I want to show you from our fluid mechanics classes, we know that in a pipe flow, the average velocity in a pipe flow is half of the maximum velocity. If you don't remember, just go through your fluid mechanics notes class notes then you, you can actually get that information so let us try to calculate the velocity average velocity along that vertical line so for calculating average velocity what I need to do there is an option uh, derived values so I go there I right click on derived values option you can see there is one averaging option and in the average there are three options i will go for the line average option so i click the line average it is asking me where from the data will come again and again i am telling whenever you take any node it will in the solution in the result section it will ask for the data source so here the data source has to be the cut line 2d why because i want to see the average velocity only along the cut line which is taken at the middle of the channel now again it is asking for whether it want to it want it wants to calculate data or average data for all the time steps or a particular time step let us consider the last time step so i click on last and then i click on okay uh, i have to actually choose what exactly i am averaging out so this is basically u x directional velocity component so i choose the expression u then i click on evaluate so you can see it is coming around 0.064 meter per second so this is the average velocity so now let us calculate the maximum velocity so again i right click here i go to maximum and i do line maximum Again, the data has to come from cut line 2D. Again, the last time step and the expression would be U. I'll click on evaluate. So you can see this is 0 0.06. This is 0 0.06. That is the maximum velocity. And how much was the average velocity? average velocity was 0 0.064 this is line average uh, yeah this is line average line average is 0 0.064 and line maxima is 0 0.066 so here you can see this is not exactly half of the maximum velocity so you can think there is some error with this fluid flow problem so otherwise it should be half of the average velocity velocity should be half of the maximum velocity so i stopped here today but i stop with this question mark why exactly i am not getting the maximum velocity and the average velocity relation which one we have read in our in our fluid mechanics classes so there might be some problem but obviously our simulations are not wrong some there is something with the concept you can think about it if you know the answer you can write 
it in the comment section but in the next video i will come up with this question mark and i will solve this question and i will answer you why exactly the average velocity is not matching for this particular case if you are liking our videos do subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your peers so that we get more motivation to upload videos thank you